President Salva Kiir, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you very much. Pretty much three years ago, you became the president of a new independent nation, South Sudan. And yet today, here we sit, and your nation seems to be tearing itself apart. Why? After the independence, we thought that uh, we have a task to deliver services to the people, which we promised them during the war. But uh, some of my colleagues were impatient to wait according to what we have put down in the Constitution. And so they had wanted to get into power very quickly. And this is what is tearing our country into pieces now. You, uh, you blame the impatience of colleagues. Do you accept responsibility yourself for what is happening to South Sudan today? Well, whatever blames that, you know, I can accept, I can accept, but I can't accept mistakes of others, especially after the 15th of December 2013, because that, that was uncalled for. Explain to me what you mean by uncalled for. There was no reason for leaving peaceful talks and go for arms. Now this to wage war against a nation. This is the crux of what has become the conflict. Riek Machar, who was your vice president until you sacked him in the summer of 2013, claims that in December of 2013, your presidential guard moved against newer people inside that unit and that that was the beginning of what became a conflict instigated he says by you he was lying i don't think that i can do that the presidential guards unit even now has no reason to move against any newer soldier in that unit. The second in command of that division is a newer, and he is still with us to date. So if there was any intention of killing any newer, why was he left untouched? I want to get into the tribal ethnic element of the conflict today in a second. But before we do, I must push you further on your relationship with Riek Machar. He, of course, now is leading an armed rebellion inside the country. The country is, in effect, in a state of civil war. You met him in Addis Ababa just a few days ago. You signed a cessation of hostilities agreement and you laid out a process to work together on a new political roadmap. But it sounds to me like he does not trust you and you do not trust him. Well, uh, as long as we are doing one thing, I can trust him if he was sincere to his words. I can trust him. But if somebody is not sincere, it will be very difficult, even you yourself, to trust such a person. We signed a cessation of hostilities on the 9th of, of this month. And on the 11th, he violated it, attacking our forces. You think he is actually instructing his forces to continue their offensive? Definitely. Because he did not give them orders to stop fighting after signing. Are you saying to me that the ceasefire is effectively finished? No, it is not finished on my side. My forces are reserving the ceasefire. They are observing it strictly according to the orders. I asked Riek Machar just a few days ago whether he was truly in full control of all his forces. He insisted he was. I put the same question to you. 
Are you truly in control of all of the forces fighting in your name? I'm in full control because these are regular forces under my command. I'm in full control of them. What about the Ugandan battalions who are still in this country and involved in this conflict? <coughs> what about the justice and equality movement fighters from the south of Sudan who are in your country fighting in your name? They are not under your control. Uh, no, they are not fighting in my name and they were brought in by Riek Machar and his colleague Taban Dengai. These were the people who brought them in. Not Mr. Me. President, I've spoken to independent security sources who say that fighters from the justice and equality movement from Darfur are in Bentiu and are fighting in your name. Well, I don't believe. The time they came in, is over and we and we so already, they did they did come in they came in when taban was the governor that was the time they were in Bantu. and what about the ugandans we have other reports okay that, the ugandans are in south sudan they came in after the incident in december but there are ugandan forces who have been here since 2006 but in and this they conflict, were brought in by Riek if, if I may say so, Mr. President, there mm -hmm. is irrefutable evidence that the Ugandans have been fighting on yes, your side. Yes, I don't side. deny that. I don't deny that. They have dropped cluster bombs. They fought in Bor, and they stopped there in Bor. They have not gone anywhere. They are here in Juba. They are in Bor. And they have used cluster bombs? No. I never heard that. Well, why, when one of the international munitions clearance organizations asked for permission to go and clear cluster bombs from well, an area around Bor, and they were not given permission. Is that because you are but, embarrassed about uh, what the Ugandans are doing? Not at all, not at all. I never got that information even, that some agency wanted to go and clear any mines around Bor. I never got that report. You characterize <coughs> this as a conflict instigated by Riek Machar. But the truth is, right now, this looks like a conflict between tribes with deep ethnic hatred fueling the fighting. Well, uh, it is him who have actually incited the Nuer against Dinkas. But on our side, we have never done that. The hatred, yes, has been planted in them by Riek Machar. And we, on our side, always diffuse it. We tell people, no, Mr. there President, is no revenge. The facts don't appear to bear that out. The first serious, outrageous acts of violence based on ethnicity appear to have taken place here in Juba, right after December 15th. We have reports, backed by evidence from the United Nations and Amnesty International, of your troops going into neighborhoods in this city, seeking out newer men, taking them to security facilities, and murdering them. When I got the information that there was killings going on in the estates around Juba, I set up a commission, and then I sent in troops to arrest whoever that has taken law into his own hand. But with and respect, it was the security forces who were doing the killing the based law, on ethnicity, the, the, your security forces. I don't, I, don't, I don't think, but I am not defending them. I say law does not know whom you are. If the security forces were involved in that, they must be punished for their actions. Well, let's not say if. All of the evidence, including an extensive UN report, says you your forces were responsible. Will you accept that? I will not accept until they are investigated and then it is confirmed. An investigation has taken place it by the United place. Nations? Yes, it is taking place. A commission to, to investigate is there. And the, the AU also has set up a commission to come and investigate. Because of those incidents and the deaths of hundreds of newer people and the fact that you know right across this city newer people thousands and thousands of them fled for their lives to the safety of un compounds what we now have if, is a conflict which looks dangerously like it is a, not, a rwanda style uh, no, ethnic it is not. conflict it will not 
it will not go to that stage. These people who have run to the UNUM scam are now coming out on their own because they have seen there is nobody who is targeting them. But I've been in what the camps. About, there what, are people in no, those camps wait, who are still frightened for their lives. What, those who are in, inside the camps are actually people who have been politicized because Riek Machar is sending messages that don't come out. We are coming to liberate you when we capture Juba. Is that what you say to the woman who saw her husband shot in front of their children? Well, you say that she has been politicized? That's not politicized. That's just a woman who believes in this country today it is dangerous to be a new heir in okay. a Dinka majority city. Well, these people are even lucky. The Dinkas who were in the, in the hands of Yeg Machar, you cannot get a survivor who can tell you the story of what was happening. Did you ask him whether he was able to spare any Dinka? No. Those who were in, uh, his, his commander of the army forces, uh, Peter Gadet, murdered his own deputy commander in the division. You talk about Peter Gadet. It is interesting that he's been identified by the Americans as an individual responsible allegedly for serious atrocities who has now had sanctions imposed upon him. The chief of your presidential guard has also had US sanctions imposed upon him and the UN Secretary General has said that those responsible for the atrocities and the systematic violation of humanitarian law should be held to account in a special tribunal. I agree. But that could be you. It, it can be me. If it is me that has given orders, I, have done, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind facing the law. Did you give orders? I did not. I did not give orders for fighting. Riek Machar gave orders for fighting and if you were to listen to the uh, security people, you will get it that he knew he was ordering his forces to open fire. See, Riek Machar says to understand this conflict today, you have to go back. You have to go back to your governance of South Sudan over the last two and a half years. He says that over that period, you behaved more and more like a dictator. Well, you will have to prove. You will have to prove what have I done that shows I'm a dictator. Well, it's an interesting point, you say. Look at the evidence. Let us look at the evidence. Let us look at the letter, for example, written by a group of senior U.S. State Department officials and South Sudan experts who wrote an open letter to you in July 2013 and said this, We joined you in your fight against the abuses of the Khartoum regime for many years, but we cannot now turn a blind eye when yesterday's victims become today's perpetrators. That was a message to you. To correct whatever that might have gone wrong. In your administration? Well, even now in Obama administration, there are mistakes. In Cameron administration, there are mistakes. You will not count them on Obama, nor will you count them on, on David Cameron.